everybody to Pitch Strike Chronicles podcast. I'm Chats. I'm here with Donald and Rob, and you are listening on sportnarium.com slash player on Sportswire Radio. And a little something different uh, to start off the show. Um, I watched a little football last night. And uh, I was watching Giants Chiefs. Yep. And I got to say, for a team that was supposed to be, you know, when you look at you listen to uh, other sports, you know, a, a lot of sports talk, social media, you know, the newspapers, the Giants were supposed to be like a, you know, uh, a subpar team this year. And the Chiefs coming, you know, coming off, you know, having good runs over the last couple of years. I actually thought the Giants put up a good fight in that game last night. What really surprised me the most, and I don't know if this is a problem that's um, throughout football. I don't watch it. You guys, everybody that's watching now, if you're listening, you can you can't see their facial reactions. But when I brought up football, like their jaws hit the floor. So <laughs> the one thing I noticed is there's a lot of flags that they throw. It seemed like every you know I was watching. I was able to watch some of the fourth quarter and um, it was right when the chiefs tied it with the field goal, but it really seemed like every play there was a flag being thrown. Is that something that's really been going on? Is that a problem? Or, you know, like, like haunting? Like throwing so many flags for every little thing. There's no momentum in the game. Yeah. Like a taunting right. penalty because you're pointed. Ah, uh, that's 15 yards. Take it back. Because he went like this. Like, I, I this is, first of all, as a Giants fan, I just want to say thank you, John Mara, for approving these ridiculous taunting rules because you probably just cost us a win by thinking these are good. Um, there's a flag on every play, almost every play. It's holding, there's offsides, false. I mean, there's, there's penalties up the ass in the NFL. Um, I will say this: the Giants surprised me yesterday. I thought we were going to get smacked. I, I thought I thought we were about to lose by like fifty. They got some lucky breaks with turnovers, but um, they still stink. You know, it, it is what it is. They're I'm sick of talking about the potentials there because you see it every single week. Like, oh, this guy does this well, or Daniel Jones looks pretty good at times, and you're like, the potentials there if if they could or if they had one offensive lineman. I'm sick of hearing about that. Um, I, it's been a decade of irrelevancy for the Giants since they won the Super Bowl. And even that year, you can say we were lucky to get there if we didn't have Eli Manning. So, yeah, uh, if we're going to talk football today, <laughs> we can go on for a very long time about our frustrations. And I'm sure Donald feels the same way. Uh, yeah, the, the, listen, the, the flags uh, are a combination of Sometimes the referees want to be too involved in the ball game. That that happens. There can be some t- ticky tack calls that they like to call, but a lot of it is to do with uh, some of the new rules that were um, put in place at the start of the NFL season. And as you say, John Mara passed this uh, this new rule about taunting, and that there um, for particular relevance when Eli Penny got a first down late in the fourth quarter, and he looked at the Chiefs guy, jawed at him a little bit, turned around and went back. And that was called a 15-yard penalty. Um, Wait, that's really it's, a penalty? It's just the, uh, the, the – sorry, just the, the, that penalty, I mean, at this stage we're in week eight, Eli Penny should know just to shut his mouth and just get on with it. Uh, so there's really no excuse for it. Having said that, it's it's the stupidest law. I mean, this is football. I mean, we're not playing like some. We're not. We're not. You know, they're not ballerinas. You know what I mean? This is like a contact sport. You, you, you run into each other. You you hit each other hard. You knock each other's blocks off, and you get up, and then you. And it's just the way it is, man. When uh, in basketball, if you hit a three on somebody, you give you give them a little bit of a jaw, and then you go back. You know, there's not really anything else to it. It's just. There was a that's just stupid. So that those are two reasons why there's lots of flags, and the third reason why there's lots of flags is just generally bad coaching, and discipline everywhere. And it was about 200 yards of penalties combined between the Chiefs and the Giants. The Chiefs have got their own struggles, and the Giants are um, an, have been an ill-disciplined team all year long, and that comes from uh, from from Joe Judge. So uh, there's a lot of reasons for the flags, but I completely agree with you. 
it's really hard to watch a game now because every time there's a big play, the very first thought is, oh, is there going to be a flag here rather than, oh, that's an awesome play. And that should not needs to stop. Yeah, it was, you know, for somebody that's, you know, um, I don't watch it. I, I, I rarely watch it if I ever, if I do it all during the season. You know, I had an opportunity to get a couple of minutes to see what was going on, you know, because the guys at work, you know, the guys at work, they like to know what, what's, they like to peek in while they're, they're doing stuff around the school. And I was looking, I'm like, every play on the bottom of the screen, there's that yellow, the, the yellow uh, ticker on, you know, on the, the bottom, the flag, 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 you know, and I'm like, how do they keep them, you know, how does a team build momentum if they constantly have to keep stopping, you know, and the, I didn't realize the, the that's actually, I, I can't believe they actually have a penalty for taunting. Could you imagine, yeah, yeah. could you imagine, let, let's, it's going to be a terrible comparison because it's not like baseball has, it, there's no penalty flags, but could you imagine if on a bat flip, they're like, oh, that's taunting. So now that home run, they say, all right, you have to go to third base. You know, <laughs> you know it's just asinine. You know, it's Very competitive. You want to talk shit to your opponent. You know, exactly. It's and believe me, I, yeah, it's going to be frustrating because, you know, you, you just messed up. You know, you, you, you missed the play. You missed the tackle. You, you know, you, you dropped the pass. You know, you're already mad at yourself. And then you have somebody, you know, your, your enemy or your opponent chirping in your ear. Don't be so damn sensitive. Use that as motivation. You go, all right, you get back in the line, and I and, and you use that, and you 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 know you you power through people. Exactly. There is more. There's more trash talk in baseball than there is in football now. Like, you, how many times That's do you see sad. pitchers gnawing at the hitters after they strike them out? Like, oh, go back to the dugout or sit down, or the hitter looks back at the pitcher. There's more trash talk in baseball, which is a non-contact sport, <laughs> and there is. In football, which is a the contact sport, so like I don't know, it, the whole rule is like we can complain about the rule. That's what fans are complaining about. We're not complaining about oh, it's a penalty because under the new rules, that is a penalty. What Eli Penny did. What we're complaining about is it's a stupid rule because he just went and then like yelled at the guy. That's a penalty, or he pointed at him. Whatever. How how are we how have we gone from a sport where and I'm not saying I condone the violence, but people were like getting clotheslined, you know, and spear tackled and people were getting their helmets knocked off every, like Donald said, getting their blocks knocked off every single week to that's the penalty because you yelled at him. Like this is a sport where you have to be physical. You have to get angry and you have to show a little emotion when something big happens. And they're allowing teams to celebrate all 11 players at once in the end zone and do some hokey pokey nonsense in the end zone. That's fine. But you scream at the other player because you got a 15-yard gain in a big spot, bring it back. You know, that, that's what I can't stand. Like, we need some, some balance there. Common sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's some common sense necessary. And it's, the NFL is – they say it's a no-fun league. I mean well, – The NFL has <laughs> got the weirdest priorities, man. I mean, if you saw some of the hits that uh, Darnold took – and he passed all <laughs> concussion protocols like that. And Daniel Jones, he was he was literally like at oh, one point a couple of weeks ago, and he was right back out there the very next Sunday, passing all concussion pro protocols. I doubt that these actual concussion protocols were f fully followed, but that's another thing. But that's they're they're not too focused on that. But oh boy, you can't say anything to your opponent. Oh my god, even though. You're basically trained in practice all week to try and aim for that your your opponent and knock that guy out. So uh, how you're not supposed to just uh, have a little bit of uh, back and forth occasionally, as long as it's in good gesture and it's not like carries on and you start punching well, each other, then it's, there really shouldn't be a penalty for that. Well, the other problem it's is the NFL's, the NFL's priorities are all screwed up. It's weird. Uh, and I know I'm not the the best example for this because I, you know, 42 years old, I'm not, a, and I'm not a football fan. A lot of people say it's because I'm not a sports fan, which is not BS. And <laughs> um, 
it didn't watching that little bit last night, and it's a very you know it's a small you know five minute window of, of a game that I watched, but it didn't make me want to say it, it didn't have me thinking. You know, I really want to keep watching this to see how you know see where the season goes. You know, it didn't it didn't make me want to keep watching. And Are you talking about the Giants' perspective or just the season in general? Because I can tell you where the Giants' season is. Well, in general, is. but with, yeah. you know, with the, the amount of flags that they throw for every little thing, you know, and the way that the game just stops constantly. It's I like, don't think that was it, the to best. Me that, to me, that makes the game boring. I don't think that was the best uh, advert for the game yesterday. No. Um, I mean, the, 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 I mean, the, the Chiefs, I, I can't work out what's wrong with the Chiefs because they, they should be scoring 50 points every single week, no problem. But they're really struggling to move the ball or not throw the ball over. So there's some issues over there in Kansas. But the Giants, they're, <laughs> they're malfunctioning, man. They've been malfunctioning for 10 years. And as we hear, the always the excuse is, oh, well, if this happens and this happens, the Giants could be good. But it's, it's kind of like, right, oh, there's always a caveat. Oh, the Giants could. Giants are going to be good, but they have to do this. They have to do that. And it's since we grew up through the '90s, and then obviously through the the time where um, Eli won us two Super Bowls and we made the playoffs very regularly with Eli, we were held to a different standard. But that standard is now completely gone, and now it's always these caveats. Oh, it could be good if this happens and that happens. But we should actually hold this team to the same standard because we've seen it for, for the, as the Giants are one of the you know the 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 main organizations in all of NFL football. They were this one of the founding fathers of the NFL, the New York Giants. They're one of them. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, now we're just kind of going used to this kind of below average football to the point where is if you see one victory, it's like oh everything's. Wonderful, and this guy's fantastic. This fans, uh, come on, we're two and six. You know what I mean? So I don't think that was the best advert, dude. Like, there's a lot better football. The Giants struggle to move the ball. They don't score. That's just they've been doing it all year. There's a <laughs> bunch of teams that score uh, like 40 points a game, and it's fun, and it's a lot of fun. I watch Red Zone every Sunday, and I have a great time. It's usually when I watch Giant games, I'm miserable because. It's like you're watching two different sports. When the Giants play football, it's a different sport to when other teams, the good teams play football because they score. Other teams score. No problem. We don't. So yeah. it's not the best advert, dude. NFL is awesome. You just need to find a better game. <laughs> go, go watch the Rams. They're going to be fun to watch. Go watch some Rams games. Watch Buffalo. Watch the Titans. Don't watch the Chiefs this year because, like you said, they're, something's wrong with them. The fact that they didn't put up 70 on us yesterday – like I don't know, they were moving the ball at will, and they only had twenty points. And Mahomes looks lost out lost. there, and I don't know. Like if I can only imagine what he would be like behind the Giants' offensive line. Which, by the way, the Chiefs drafted Trey Smith in like the sixth round, and the Giants did not draft a single offensive lineman. <laughs> we can rolling, get into that ad nauseum. <laughs> yeah, they're rolling Nate Solder's ancient ass over there at right tackle because the entire line is hurt, and he's getting smoked within two tenths of a second. Daniel Jones is throwing the ball with a three hundred and twenty pound defensive lineman in his face every other play. But let's blame the quarterback for everything. Look, before we go into baseball talk, I want to say that I was not a fan of the Daniel Jones pick. However, I want to be proven wrong. I've seen things from Jones that make me say he can be good at the NFL level, because as much as it pains other fans when I say this, I see a lot of Eli Manning and Daniel Jones, early see, early career Eli Manning. Yet, they are not it's giving him – It's early, bro. Yes, it is. And it's not his fault, though, because he's actually looked better this year than he did last That's year. True. He's looked very good at times this year. He's also looked bad at times, but the good has outweighed the bad so far. Yet – He's throwing to brick hand Darius Slayton as his number one target. Everyone's hurt. I mean, Jason Garrett's his offensive coordinator, which that should tell you everything you need to know, how that guy is still coaching for the New York Giants right now. Like, last year wasn't an, like, a good enough example of what he is at this point. Jason Garrett had Tony Romo and Jason Witten and Des Bryant and all these playmakers in Dallas still couldn't win. 
So now he goes to the Giants where the whole team's depleted and the offense is scoring like 15 points a game, which isn't winning you anything in today's NFL. You have to put up 25 or more almost every single game to be like, we have a shot to win. And the Giants don't do that. You're not, you're not winning games scoring 17 points or kicking field goals or coaching scared. And now Joe Judge is blaming the headsets for his timeouts. Like, no. why you, yeah, he's terrible with timeouts. What, yeah. He killed us he's, yesterday with timeouts. He said, but, we've been having headset troubles all year. It's week eight or about to be week nine. Yeah. You've played eight games with headset issues, and you didn't think to get it fixed. You think I'm buying that crap? This is why I hate being a Giants and Yankees fan right now because it's like the two teams are the same. Like – Ownership sucks. Coaching sucks. Everything sucks. I hate sports. Yeah, Daniel Jones, um, he has improved from last year. Uh, if you asked me last year, uh, is Daniel Jones a guy? I would have been absolutely certain the answer is no. Um, but he has improved this year. But the thing is, we have to bear in mind that the timetable is what's hurt, is actually hurting Daniel Jones because he is inc incrementally improving, but it's only incremental. It's not massive steps. He's, each year he's making an incremental step where he's slightly seeing coverage better. He's slightly improving his accuracy and, and, and he's getting more athletic and he's turning the ball over slightly less than, than before. They're all incremental things, but it worked against him that he was picked so high, sixth in the draft, right? If he was picked later in the draft and he was given time, then that's one thing because obviously the money is different. Um, but when you're the top six money, top six pick, there's top six expectations, right? And also with the way that the NFL is now, you don't really have a lot of time. By year three, you kind of need to know that he's your guy because you need to pick up their fifth year option. Then you need to think about extension and all that stuff. And um, that's kind of that was kind of different than than before. You know, you had a lot more time before but this year but sorry in the modern with the salary cap and stuff like that you kind of had need to know pretty sure by year three and where daniel jones is where he went to college at duke which is a basketball school he uses zero star um recruit and um, he's a guy that's learning and he's improving but it's taking him time he's taking him a little longer and i'm sorry if you look at every other team that's drafted high quarterbacks They've all gone a hell of a lot better. Cincinnati, you've got Joe Burrow. They're now one of the top teams in the NFL. Josh Allen uh, at um, Buffalo is, is now one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, Arizona drafted twice a, a quarterback, and now they've got one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, Kyler Murray. And you just go through it, and I'm sorry, we're not there. And we did draft a quarterback in the top six, and you have to bear that in mind. You have to hold him to the same account. Uh, he made a bunch of mistakes yesterday, which he always does, basically on a weekly basis. He makes these mind-blowing mistakes that you can't make in year three. But then he does a lot of good things too. Uh, he's not a bad quarterback. I would say at the moment he's probably top 20 out of 30, right? I, I think he's middle of the pack, just below middle of the pack at the moment. Can you win with that? You can make the playoffs with that for sure. Um, but you need to have everybody fit and everybody outstanding to make that work. Um, do I see a Super Bowl with him? No, because Eli Manning, for what anybody really says, when it was clutch time, when it was crunch time, when it was the fourth quarter, Eli Manning was a generational quarterback. He was a different guy because he's cerebral. He read coverages. He knew exactly what was going on on the field all the time because he was so smart. He was a Manning, and uh, it helps, and he made – miraculous plays and he did it regularly and won us so much at that time and Daniel just, Jones just doesn't have that he just doesn't have that gene not a lot of people have the clutch gene and uh, so is he the guy probably not but the, where the Giants are right now um, there's not a lot of quarterbacks next year um, and unless Aaron Rodgers hits free agency I don't think and we don't even have any salary cap anyway so it looks like we'll probably have to write it out with Jones for at least one more year um, I, I, I think that's kind of how I would sum it up. What are you going to say, Tess? The development with, with some of the, you know, the, the starting players, mostly, you know, it seems like quarterback is the, the focal point of, of the argument, where, where in baseball you have, you know, the game is played pretty much the same way 
the whole way through from, you know, the game is, is pretty steady from little league to college, to the minor leagues, to baseball. There's really not much of a change. I remember when, when you got drafted, a quarterback would be drafted pretty much as the backup and learn under the starter. They didn't automatically jump into a starting role. Do you think that that's something that where you, you're not seeing as many quarterbacks develop the way that they should, being that college football does play a little different than the NFL? I mean, not, is that – Salary cap window, era. Not I'll enough time jump in and say that. The reason why that doesn't happen that much now is because of the salary cap era. Uh, because there's so much pressure, as I say, by year three, you kind of need to know year four for sure, because um, there's a whole fifth year option, then then you need to think about extending. And uh, it's all about salary cap, man. That was not an issue before. You could have had him work under, you could have had Tom Brady work under Drew Bledsoe for a long time, whatever. You know, like uh, Aaron well, Rodgers learned this? under... Um, was a Brett Ford for a while, and it's just you, you have, yeah. But and look at where their careers have gone, you know. That's my point. Yeah. You know, if you had somebody like Daniel Jones work under you know, Eli for a long period, under yeah. Eli, you might see by that year three that in that third year where he's able to take over the starting role, you might see him have a little bit more efficiency, yeah. But the teams, like, if you want to look at Rodgers learning under Favre. The Packers were a much better team than what the Giants have been the last three years. I mean, the Giants have not had an offensive line for over a decade. Um, they haven't really had a real playmaker since Odell, and they didn't even use Tony the first couple of weeks. They had some phantom injury excuse for him. Um, the situations are a lot different because nowadays, if you draft a quarterback top five, he's starting. Almost immediately. I mean, the Bears were going to have Fields sit for Andy Dalton for some reason. Um, and they've already gone with Fields at this point. Um, it, you really – you can't have that unless the quarterback is like – unless the, the Bucks are drafting a quarterback and we're going to sit you behind Tom Brady, then you do it. But there aren't a lot of veteran quarterbacks right now that you can say, I'm going to draft a quarterback and you're going to – sit and learn behind this guy because who at this point, if the Steelers draft a quarterback, right, you're not starting Ben Roethlisberger over him. He has to retire. He, his, his time is done. There really is. There are two quarterbacks right now, Rodgers and Brady, that you can draft the quarterback and sit that guy behind them until it's that time, uh, until it's that rookie's time or in their second year or whatever. But you don't like, like the Jets, if they would have, kept Darnold and still drafted Wilson. Are you going to have Zach Wilson learn from Sam Darnold? You know, like a lot of the teams have younger quarterbacks nowadays. It's just, okay. it's not what it once was back then. You had a lot of quarterbacks in their thirties going and still playing at, you know, high levels. Now the game is different. It's more of a college style with the offense being the focal point, athletic quarterbacks, quarterbacks that can run and throw. How many quarterbacks are successful in the NFL right now? that can use their legs as well as their arm. Lamar Jackson, Mahomes, Kyler Murray, even Aaron Rodgers is very is a scrambling quarterback. You know, the stagnant stand in the pocket quarterback really works for one guy at this point and that's Tom Brady because he's the best to ever do it. So it's it's a different sport than what it was even a decade ago, but we've seen that trend almost every year. It's becoming more like college football. And that's why you see a lot of these guys come straight from college and have success immediately because the game is almost the same at this point. It's just to itself. Yeah. A couple of rules change, like the one foot in bounds or the stupid college overtime rules. But really, it's not much different at this point than what it – but if you could say 15 years ago, the games, college and the NFL were different. But now – they're they're very close. I'm not, they're not the same game for sure, but they're they're a lot closer now than they were 10, 15 and years. And that's ago. why quarterbacks are expected to hit hit the ground run fairly quickly. Okay. Yeah. Certainly within by two years, they need to be hitting the ground running. Um, because it's it's different than back in the nineties when especially when Eli first started, he looked like he'd never seen a football field before when he first uh, when he first practiced and then when he first had his game, he looked he looked terrible. And the same with Troy Aikman, Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, when he first started, he looked off Peyton Manning. Same thing. But it's that was it's because it's a different era back then. Now, 
you can't really use the same standards anymore because the college game is so much similar and there's a lot more coaches that have gone from the college game up to here. And uh, I think it's quite, uh, I, I think that uh, also because of the salary cap quarterbacks, um, your window is about four years. If you can get your quarterback to win you stuff within that four years before you have to pay him uh, absolute fortune that's going to eat into most of your cap. And then that means sacrificing other positions and things like that. That's why it's such a big deal. It's called the quarterback window. And, uh, the Giants quarterback window is closing fast uh, because if, if Daniel Jones isn't winning with you having all the salary cap to go and give him all these receivers and all this stuff like that, if you're not even 500 by the, by the end of that quarterback window, then there's a problem, you know, and that's what happened to the Jets. I don't even necessarily think that Donald's a bad quarterback. I think he's very average, maybe very average. Um, but when you reach that time, you have to shit or get off the pan. And I just think they realized, right, we, we need to re- reset the clock. And that's what happens. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting conversation to have. All right, that's going to wrap things up for us today. Just remember, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check out our social media descriptions. And just remember, where you pinch right to pride, play hard. <laughs>